Well, good morning, everybody. So uh, this is a kind of a different episode. We are interviewing uh, Kevin. He has over 40 years of like contracting experience, and he has some really interesting things to say and advice for young men coming up into the trades. So stay tuned. Grab a cup of coffee. Let's get into it. All right, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, so I have a very special guest. I have Kevin here. Uh, Kevin has been in, in the electrical field for over 40 years. I was wondering if Kevin could share some of his experience and knowledge uh, with you guys. So I know this is a little different. I know it's not a car thing, but it's still in the realm of working with your hands and, and getting your hands dirty. My first question to you is what are some of the major issues you've seen with some of the younger generation coming up through the trades and what is uh, some advice you would give them if they wanted to get into the trades or be really successful at it? You know, the advice would be to show up. I don't think there's issues with the people that actually show up to work to get into the trades. It's just the amount of people that are getting into the trades. All trades nowadays, uh, mechanical, plumbing, uh, HVAC, all of them are screaming for hardworking young men willing to learn and uh, both union, non-union facets of the trade. And really, it's a heck of a way to make a living nowadays. Uh, you know, as much as technology takes over, you're still going to have to have electricity to drive it. You need people to install that and maintain it. And it's a, it's a good field to get into. It's a good trade uh, as far as you can't be afraid to get your hands dirty. You can't be afraid to get your butt up in the morning, go to work, work all day, every day. You know, that's, you got to have some drive. If you give a darn and you care and you get out of bed, I think you'll find a place that will teach you what you need to know. The company that I work for, I'll actually send you to an apprenticeship program uh, four years if you're interested. It's a good trade where everybody's getting into computers and making YouTube videos and stuff like that. Uh, and you gotta start with the basics. And the basics aren't really basics, it's pretty complicated. There's a lot of education, a lot of hard work involved. So my next question is, what is something when you were coming up through the trades that maybe like, um, like a mentor of yours or, or like a leader that you had told you that stuck out to you? And what's something that you tell the young guys? Hmm, there's been a lot. A lot I can't repeat. <laughs> it is construction. One wise older fella told me, I thought I had a phrase for him. And it says, if you get up and go to work every day, every, everything will be all right. And he said, not anymore, Kev. He says, if you get up and go to work every day and you work all day, every day, everything will be all right. That's kind of something I've kind of stuck with me. Just hard work i mean and, and ask questions the only dumb question is the one you don't ask don't don't be afraid to ask i mean hell i've been doing this 44 45 <clears throat> years and uh, i still learn every day i mean there's not there's experience is the only true form of education after all so as far as the differences between electrical plumbing contracting or electrical plumbing carpentry things like that what do you think the easiest oh. uh, the easiest trade is to break through, to get into? And what do you think is the hardest? Ooh, all right. Well, first of all, there is no easy trade. It all requires hard work, working with your hands, long days, working in the elements was one thing that, you know, I know I'm not painting a very attractive picture here, but there's a reason why it pays. And it's because everybody's not lined up to do this sort of work. Uh, the hardest, boy, I don't, I don't mean to, you know, to disrespect any of the other trades, uh, but the electrical field, as far as the overall code knowledge and schematic knowledge and blueprint knowledge is up there. I mean, it's, it requires some education and uh, HVAC control mechanics. 
are some of the best electricians I've ever worked with. That's another tough field. And if you just want to be a run-of-the-mill journeyman wireman, uh, journeyman plumber, journeyman uh, mechanical guy, they're all about the same. I said, how far you want to take each one of those trades to, to get up on the upper levels of those trades. It's all got to do with what you want to learn, what you want, what classes you want to take, how proficient you want to get in the industry. Then you get into estimating, engineering, design. Uh, I've been called in to contribute to the design on some larger projects, and uh, that's very satisfying as well. Uh, on the weirder side of a question, with the personal debt increasing per person, specifically with student loans, do you think that, A, it's still necessary that to be successful in today's world, you have to have a four-year degree? Absolutely not. I don't even have to think about that. No, you can do very well in the trades. Now you're not going to make 150,000. Probably rare that you're going to make 100,000, but 75 to 90,000 is very reachable, you know, on the upper end of the scale and to start with whatever $20 an hour is, what's that 48,000 a year or something like that. And I know people that are coming out of college that don't make that. And uh, so no, absolutely not. You do not need a four-year college degree to be successful. Now, if that's the road you choose, you know, a lot of variables variables apply to that too. It's what you do with that four-year degree. You know, if you want to just wave it around in the air and say, I got a four-year degree, well, la di da you know, you, experience is the only true form of education. You need to take that degree, apply it, work in the area that that degree is pertaining to, and excel in that field. That's where you're going to make the big money. And that's in the trades with a college degree. But no, short answer to that is no, you do not need a four-year college degree. Now, you do need a four-year apprenticeship, uh, which isn't mandatory. But if you want to learn the ins and the outs in the quickest way possible, you're going to need to go to school in some fashion, continued education. You're just not going to roll out of bed after you graduate high school fall into a trade and advance like there's no tomorrow. Ain't going to happen. That's a pipe dream. you got to apply yourself. you got to go to school in some form. But uh, to answer the question about the degree, it is not mandatory. Yeah, so we're a firm believer here at Good Morning Mechanic that you don't need a four-year degree, but you do need higher education of some sort. Yeah. Um, get educated in a trade. Go to mechanic school. Go to a journeyman school. Become an electrician, a plumber. Do something post Secondary, like uh, do something after high school, but you don't have to get a four-year degree unless you want to. I'll expand on that. You asked me about some advice that was given to me. It kind of brought something to light. I was probably 27, 28 years old, just starting to have children and busted my butt every day. And there were some guys on the job. I did twice as much, and that's without exaggeration. And I went into the office trailer, and I sat down in front of the boss, and I said, I need more money. This guy over here, da, 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 da. And the boss looked at me and said, Kevin, and he reached out and he grabbed a code book, slammed it on the table. You want more money? It's in the book. Learn it. You learn that book, I'll pay you more money. And I learned the book. Okay, because that's, you know, you, you can be the hardest worker, but you need certifications. You need licenses. You need things like that. Where, you know, because at the end of the day, someone's going to put the name of an individual on there that's responsible for that work. And that's generally the licensed person. And that's the person that makes the money because at the end of the day, he's responsible. Now, you're going to do very well if you're the one that does all the work, but you're not going to make, you know, upper echelon money. So anyway, it's in the education. I want to leave like kind of a legacy for my kids. And my grandkids, like I want even my great grandkids to be able to look at my videos and be like, oh, shoot, that was great grandpa. Right. So, you know, great grandkids, great, great grandkids, great, great, great grandkids. What do you want them to know about you? I lived a hard, um, honest, hardworking life. Probably did a little too much on the work side, but someone has to pay for this. Shit.
No. <laughs> so I try to tell you, you know, oh, you work too much. Oh, you work too much. Well, you like to go to Florida, don't you? You know, you like the car in the driveway, don't you? I mean, it ain't free. Um, I try to uh, just basically an honest, hardworking guy who loves his family to the end of the earth. Will do anything for any one of you, and you, and they know that. Um, and if they're not, if I'm not around when they're older to show them myself, I'm sure my sons will tell them how I was. And uh, I might be a little rough around the edges, uh, well, maybe a lot rough around the edges, but inside I'm a teddy bear, and I love everybody in the family, and uh, I will work till I don't have to anymore, which might be a little bit, but, and uh, provide for you guys and help you guys and uh, do what I can on the fun end of things. And 4th of July's and Christmases have always been there. Um, just to know that uh, as important work is, it doesn't mean a whole lot if you can't share it with your family and at least several times a year, get together and have a good time. and. Um, yeah, I mean, I just work and family and, uh, God, I mean, I'm not the most God faring man. I believe in God. Uh, I worship in my own way. Um, so those are the three most important things in your life should be your faith, your family, and your job. And, um, uh, I can't sum myself up any more than that. So that wraps up this interview, uh, with Kevin, who's actually my dad. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming in, uh, Dad, to do this interview. And uh, you guys, let us know in the comments what you think. All right. Love you. <clears throat> well, I didn't even say my thing. All right. We got to – okay. He he got up and walked away. That's that's my that's my dad. All right. We'll try this again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure uh, you guys are a subscriber. Uh, go ahead and check out the Shopify if you guys want one of these Good Morning Mechanic t-shirts. They're super soft, super snuggly. Thank you for tuning in. As always, have a good morning.